Hi folks, Alan Nursall from Tell Us World of Science Edmonton. And I'm here in my kitchen with my phone and I got to thinking, what are some things that people could do here in the comfort of their kitchen, the comfort of their home, to explore the wonders of the world through the eyes of science? So I dug out a couple of my favorite simple activities and uh, you can try these at home because they're kind of cool. You might impress some friends, you might win some bets, who knows? Let's start with a bag of water. A polyethylene bag full of water and polyethylene is magical stuff because it keeps the water in there. The last thing you want to do is start poking holes in a bag of water because that's just going to lead to Normally that leads to trouble, except when you have the magic of the long molecules of polyethylene. They're long, springy molecules that want to retain their shape and they'll find a way to seal up those pencils as you shove them through the polyethylene bag full of water. Tip, don't use red wine in the living room for this one. Try it over the kitchen sink first. But yeah, kind of simple thing that's, that's just a cool, unexpected result. Now, Speaking of cool, I should go in my fridge. What do I have back here? Oh, perfect. Got a can, look at that. Already opened as if I was gonna use it for something. Club soda, nice clear fizzy soda. I'm gonna pour it into this tall clear glass here. It will fizz away. Now we can make for your elegant dinner party, a special type of drink. Take popcorn kernels. Drop the popcorn kernels in and give it just a moment and all of a sudden they come to life! Oh my goodness, they can swim! Oh no, they can't swim that long. Some of them can swim. They're up there, oh, oh, there goes one swimming. Oh, there goes one back down again. There they go back down again and back up and back down. And they will do this for an hour as the kernels sit on the bottom, they pick up bubbles of carbon dioxide. The bubbles of carbon dioxide, when they accumulate, they get enough of them that the kernel will float. Up at the top, the bubbles pop and the kernels fall back down to the bottom again. And you can get the rising and falling popcorn kernels going for a very long time, entertaining all your dinner guests or yourself as the case may be. Now, speaking of elegant dinner parties, no elegant dinner party would be possible without a candle. Candles are miracles. They burn, give us light, give us warmth. They have a, a string wick that sort of holds things together, it seems, and this wax tube that is the source of fuel. But the question really is, how does a candle burn? Is it the string that's burning? The solid wax doesn't appear to be burning. Let's try something. I'm going to show you something that will help us understand why this candle is burning. Get some flame going. I'm going to blow it out. Do that again. If you look carefully, don't even have to touch the wick in order to get the candle to reignite. Because it's not the wick that's burning. It's the vapors of the wax. The wax, when it gets it close to the heat, it liquefies, and eventually, as it draws up the uh, draws up the wick, it turns to gas, turns to vapor, and it's the vapors going off the wick that form that burn in the flame. So you can reignite the candle without even touching the wick if the candle has just gone out and those hot vapors are still present. There, you can try that at your next dinner party too. And that's about it for this chapter of. Kitchen Science with Al. Alan Nursall, Tell Us World of Science, Edmonton, over and out.